Are we ready to practice? We're going to start this practice in Virasan. So make sure you have two blocks. We'll be sitting on them and placing them here. And coming knees together, feet apart. Making sure to pull the calves both back and out to really give space to the back of the knee. And then sitting back on the blocks. The hands widening those sit bones apart, pulling each one back and out, making sure that the feet are as in as possible and that the outside edges of the feet are pressing down. Press the shins down. If you're feeling any kind of tightness in the knee, pull the skin of the kneecaps up and see how beautiful that little movement can release so much. So keep pressing the outside edges of your feet down, rolling the shoulders back, the collarbones long, the chest lifted. And with each breath, try to sit taller, straighter. Keep pressing the outside edges of the feet down. The spine ascending, the shins pressing down, the chest lifting. Feel that entirely new shape. And then lifting the hands up, but keep the action of the feet, pressing the palms together and closing the eyes completely. Connecting here with our breath. And evening it out as needed. Finding a soothing rhythm of breath. The inhale and the exhale matching each other. And noticing with the breath, feel the mind becoming more composed. Feel the brain relaxing. And feel our hearts opening. Inhale. to increasing sensitivity and mindfulness as we progress through the rest of our practice. So let's remove one block and pull the calves back and out. So we're in Virasan on just one block. If you need to pull the skin of the kneecaps up and rewiden the sit bones apart. Bring the arms in front, interlock the fingers, turn the palms out, make sure your thumbs are pressing against each other and pull the hands back to the centre chest. Move the shoulders down and lift the centre chest up. Inhale and exhale, extend. And again, bending, shoulders down. And extend, out through the heels of the hands, bending. And extend. Two more, bend, shoulders down. And extend, make sure the elbows are extended. Last one, bend. And extend, push out through the heels of the hands, move the shoulders down, squeeze the elbows, and two, and one, coming back in. And moving the hands to the top of the head. Make sure your thumbs are still pressing against each other. Move your trapezius muscles down, the shoulder blades down so they're not hunching up. Inhale, and exhale. And bend back with the chest. And exhale, extend. And bend back. And exhale, squeeze the elbows more. And bend, two more. And extend, get that lift. And bend, last one. Press into the feet, press into the shins. And push upwards. Press the front thighs down and lift up even more. And two. And one, coming back down. And releasing. 
All right, changing the interlock to the other little fingers underneath. And we're starting again. Extend and bend. Extend and bend. Extend, bend. Two more. Extend. Last one. And in. Moving the hands up for our second variation. Lift the chest, press the shins down, the feet down, the front thighs down, and extend. Bend. Extend. Time it with the breath as you extend, exhale. Bend. Last one. Move the shoulders down, lift the arms, stretch the waist, open the side ribs, and two, and one, coming back down, and out. All right, let's move this block and see if we can come and be on the floor. Releasing the front knees, and if it's too much, go back to the block, putting the feet in, and pressing the outside edges of the feet down. So the feet are rolling, and as you press down, lifting the spine, lifting the chest, shoulders rolling back. Fill that space with a deep inhalation, a deep exhalation. And now we're going to widen the knees apart just a little bit and come forward to Yoga Mudrasana, remembering to move the front hips back as you come forward. So two lines, one line as you're going back and then the line of the trunk coming forward. Pay attention to which foot or which shin you're favouring and try to redistribute so that you're using both shins as evenly as possible. And then go to the roots of the thighs and draw in both roots of the thighs as evenly as possible into their respective hip sockets. So from the even pressing of the shins, you'll be able to travel to the roots of the thighs by pressing into the shins, and you'll invite, you'll draw the head of the femur bone back into the hips. So again, figuring that out inside with the tension through the breath, how you can gently micro-adjust to get that even absorption of the head of the femur bones into the hip sockets. to come out of that and just extend the right leg back, straighten the knee completely and rock forward and backwards. So let's integrate the openings we brought to the knee and the foot, back in and then changing sides. Mm, nice big click open and forward and backwards, keep the knee straight and back. All right, to that dress on, which is going to seem so easy after what we've just done. Here we are, but we're going to bring our hands back, right back, in order to lift the knees up and stretch the dorsal foot. That's it, lift up, stretch the dorsal foot. Good, and then coming back. And hands back again, lift the knees up, stretch the foot. And back, back in, find that evenness, 
Don't let the chest close. Lift it up. And forward again. Two more times. Make sure the feet are still parallel. Hands back. Leaning into that breathing. Sending the exhale there to the dorsal feet. And forward. One last time. Bringing the hands back. Inhale. Keeping the chest open. Exhale. Lifting the knees, the shins. Stream the exhalation there. And then coming out. Mm, and we're now going to turn the toes under for the final little stretch. That's right. And I want you to reach back with your hands and make sure that as much as possible your big toes are touching. And if you have big toes that go towards the index toe and then there's, there's a bunion, then you might want to put a little strap between so that the big toes can be brought to the strap. And try to have even space between your toes. Often also the little toe is stuck to the fourth toe. So you want to separate that and then sitting back and you're going to feel the array of the roots of the toes in a different way. Often there's a tendency to overpress into the big toe area and sometimes a tendency to overpress into the outer toe area. So looking for that evenness along each base of the root of the toe. Bring the hands behind, interlock the fingers, press the thumbs together and roll the shoulders back, stretch the arms. Keep pressing the feet down, the front thighs down and try and get a longer and longer line in the body from the pubic bone to the belly button to the solar plexus to the sternum. And then coming out, remember which little finger is underneath. Just give your feet a little break. And let's come back in. So take the time to reach, to adjust, to give each toe some attention, some awareness, some love, and then sitting back and feeling, adjusting, getting that evenness, then bring the hands behind, change the interlock of the fingers, tips of the thumbs pressing against each other. The opening of the shoulder starts from the center of the chest, in both directions, right and left, and travels out through the length of the arms. The dorsal spine pressing forward. You're really literally pressing a new shape, the shape of inner freedom into the trunk, into the lungs, into the heart, into the stem. And then coming out and releasing. Once again, extend the right leg, squeeze the knee straight. And rocking forward and backwards, really push the heel back. Feel the whole Achilles tendon calf stretch open. And then changing sides. Rocking forward, rocking backwards. And all right, taking a blanket for this next one. And you may wish to have two blocks on each side of you. I'll move the box forward so you can see what I'm doing. So we've got our hands and knees and we are now crossing the left leg behind. The left shin is going to go onto the right calf. And we're going to sit back onto this left heel. We don't want our feet to do this, which is what they really want to do. We want to keep them like this. So we're sitting back on the heel, and you may like to have a little bit of lift here on this first one that we do, just to make it a little bit more comfortable and accessible. There might be some pain when you press into the calf, the congestion of cells there. And the blocks coming in, so we're a little higher now. So the blocks are there so you can press down and lift and lengthen this front line, the chest open. 
Roll the shoulders back. Now keep pressing that shin into the calf. Keep pressing then the calf into its respective shin, into the earth. The legs are pressing and grounding down. You're not just sitting, you're pressing with them. And there's this inward lift, the organs rising, the sternum opening. Lift the chin, shoulders back, and feel the side ribs here broadening. Breathe into that space. And now we're going to change sides. So we're coming up. And we move the blankets, you can see. And bringing the right shin on top of the left calf now. You're lifting it up so the knee is lifted. And as you sit back, don't let the feet open. And you're sitting on this right heel. Blanket in place, locks in place. Now don't be shy, really press that shin into the calf. We get so much tension in the calf and the feet, and we're on them all day long, we rarely give them a lot of attention. So when you do maximize, dare to go into that level of pain and diffuse the breath and keep feeling the release that's happening. Your calves are going to thank you. Press down into the hands to lift the chest up. The arms also moving towards the hands, the hands pressing down to help with that lifting upwardness, that length to come into the front body, that fountaining open of the chest, that new shape. Lift the chin. Deep inhalation, fill that shape. And when you exhale, keep the broadness. Don't close with the exhale. Just relax the back muscles, the tension of the shoulders. And then coming out, moving the blocks forward and uncrossing. And one more time, let's ease out the leg, right leg first, pushing the heel right back, coming forward. And the left leg. Now we're gonna make what we just did a little bit more active. We're gonna be jumping into those Gongasans from Alamukashanasans. So putting all this stuff to the side and finding our first Adhamukha Shanasa. Lift the heels up high so that you can really extend the sit bones to the sky. Stretch the arms and stretch the legs. Tighten the elbows, tighten the knees. Press the chest open to the front thighs. Now looking up, bending your knees, preparing. We're going to jump and land with the left shin on the right calf. So ready, here we go. And sitting back. Bring the hands back, press into the feet, lift the knees up, and releasing, and jumping back to Adhamukha This time, press your heels down in Adhamukha but keep trying to lift the line underneath the buttocks up to the sky. And then looking up, bending the knees, changing sides, we're going to jump and the right shin will be on the left half. Sitting back and bringing the hands back, lifting the knees, stretching the feet in new ways. And releasing and jumping back to Adam Kishnasa. Now in this downward dog with your hands, hold the side of your mat. 
and really turn the inner elbows forward so the shoulders are broad. Now bend the knees, keep the arms straight, push yourself away from the hands, lower the head, press the shoulder blades forward, pump them forward a few times. You can lift your heels as needed and then extend the legs straight. Keep the shoulder blades pressing forward, the chest and the armpits opening. And then looking up, bringing the hands in, bending the knees, preparing to jump, the left shin will go on the right calf. Sitting back on that heel, place the hands on the knees, press down, lift the chest up. And then hands to the mat and Jumping back, Alamukashvarasa. Now, even though the hands aren't holding the side of the mat, try to press the shoulder blades into the upper back and forward, just as you did in the last variation. Get that chest open, get the armpit open. And then inhale, looking up, and we're going to jump the right shin on the left calf. Sitting back, hands on the knee, press down, shoulders down, chest lifting, deep inhalations, deep exhalations. And then releasing hands here, preparing to jump back. Adam Krishnamasa. And then looking up, walking forward, make sure to bend the knees as you walk forward. Place the feet parallel, the width of the mat, holding on to the back heels. Inhale, look up, grip your legs, press the feet down. Be firm in the roots of the thighs. And exhale, pull yourselves forward. Uttanasana. And then looking up, hands to the mat, and back to Adam Mukhasan with the feet closer together. Stepping the right leg forward and straightening the back leg, heel to the ground, preparing for Pashvutanasan. Extend, turning the hips. And bend, extend, and bend. With the exhale, extend, back heel firm, and extend, bend. Each time you extend, it's a better extension. Grip the knee, grip the thigh up, stretch those arms forward, lowering the head. And now, moving up, changing sides. Make sure there's enough distance between your feet. Press the back heel to the mat firmly. Squeeze the back in the knee. 
and extend. And bending and extend. Bend and extend. Bend. Keep the back leg firm. Extend. Last one. Bend and extend. Stretch the arms forward. Lower the head and make sure to keep pushing the weight of the pose back. So push into your fingertips to push the weight of the pose back. Back. Roots of the thighs firm. And then looking up, mm, and we're going to step the back leg in, keep the width of the mat with the first two fingers holding the big toe, Parangushasana, grip the knees and thighs up, inner groins rolling back, and exhaling and forward. The knee must be lifting, the thigh must be lifting, all the way to the very top of the thigh. Keep training the muscle fibers to grip up in that direction. up, hands to the mat, stepping back, really have a distance between your hands and your feet, longer than you're used to, spread the fingers widely, spread the toes so the walls of the feet are broad, an array of toes, the roots of the toes being felt, push the shins back, push the front thighs back, feel the buttocks rise up as you press the shoulder blades in and press the heels down, Adho Mukha Looking up, bending the knees and bringing the knees to the ground. And our last series of Domukasan. So you may wish to have a block. We are going to, first of all, move the block so you can see. We're going to lift the left knee up and cross it completely behind the right. Wire the feet apart and then sit back on the mat. And this is where you may decide, I need some height, because if your knees are very far apart and very lifted, it's better to bring some height and have the thighs start to drop down from the hips. I'm going to move it away so that I can have go a little bit deeper for me. Then look at your feet, adjust them so you can read them from left to right or right to left. And make sure that they're not too close to the outer thighs. If you want to increase sensation, you keep moving your feet further away, making sure they're in line with each other. Lift the ribs up and exhaling forward. And we can immediately feel it in the back hips, moving slowly, smoothly with our breath. The arms are not decorative. They are firm. Think of the arms as legs. And they're really helping us in this pose because as we press into the fingertips, we push away from the, uh, the hands and the arms lift and straighten, the shoulders broaden, and they also help to push the hips back. And we increase that opening there, rather than sort of staying perched, we actually settle into the pose.
And now we're going to go to the right. So walking our hands to the right, our abdomen coming over that top thigh. And we want to extend the left arm, which brings that length. And then the right arm is bending and we're pressing, which brings that twist in us. and back up and when we change sides we'll do the left so we're rocking back up onto the hands and knees uncrossing and changing sides so let's bring that right knee behind really fit them together like a puzzle as best as you can widen the feet and coming down and take the support that gives you as much as possible the presence of the knees close to each other not far apart and then adjust your feet. And now we're coming forward. So I'm lifting the ribs to lengthen this part of the abdomen where a lot of our organs are contained. So spaciousness there as we come down. And then the arms charge forward. And remember, they really have a purpose. So press into them and explore their purpose. Don't just be there accept, accepting. I mean, be there accepting and breathing, of course but explore the purpose of adjustments and how you can, with time and patience and sensitivity, really fine-tune the pose to a new pose entirely. And now we're walking our arms to the left and the right arm is doing the lengthening, the stretching, the reaching forward and the left arm is bending and you're pushing into the hand to twist from there. So lengthening and twisting. ourselves back up and uncrossing and sitting back in the front <sighs> Okay, let's now take this to a supported sit and So we're going to need a bolster and two blocks and a strap, a couple of blankets and a wall. So we're having our feet pressing against the wall. So gathering all that stuff and we'll meet back for the next part, the supine restorative part. Here we go, blocks for our feet. So you really wanna have them, the width of the mat. So you could even go wide if you wanted. You just have to bring your bolster a little closer. Bolster, you will have to check your distance by the way before you commit. And a blanket here, which I've folded in half. Some people like to have it trifolded. If you're not comfortable within half, then just roll over, press balls, come out, and try the trifold. You really have to fine tune blankets in a way that's right for you. So, first thing, check the distance. So, you want to be able to lie down with the heels on the blocks, being like that. And if you can't, adjust. And I'm going to roll over. And if your distance is right, 
Let's take our strap and place it around the outer edges of the heels, I mean the feet, so that we have the distance of our blocks. So if you're doing a wider foot, of course, same application. As we lie down, we're lifting the hips and buttocks, moving them towards the wall so that the sacrum is moving towards the wall, the anal mouth is facing the wall, and our lumbar area is not arching. And then we're pushing into the feet, pushing ourselves back. Move those trapezius muscles down the back, don't let them get caught up, rising up. The legs are straight, and the arms have several choices. I'm going to go with this one. Make sure you're lying right in the middle of the back of the skull. Gita used to say that we unconsciously favour one side of the skull so much that the moment we fall asleep, for instance, we'll go to that side and over time we'll get a little indent there. So it might not feel comfortable to lie in the middle of the back of the skull. And we really want to find that spot so that our neck can start to get even. If we can find the center of the back of the skull from there, we can even both sides of the neck and relax both shoulders and find there access even openness in both lungs, both sides of the rib cage. The eyes closing, Ujjayi one breath. Just to remind you that even though this is a supine restorative pose, there are still internal important actions to check in with. For instance, the right buttock connecting to the right heel, the left buttock connecting to the left heel, to ensure that in your restingness, you don't forget about these actions, the sacrum moving towards the heels. Because the adjustment of the sacrum and the lower back is affecting the front body, the pubic bone, the organs and the abdominal cavity and the way that they're moving, which in turn affects the lungs, the thoracic ribs, the sternum chest. So through the breath, scanning the body, keeping an eye and gently micro-adjusting as needed. And watch how the pose fountains open and brings gifts in new ways. And I'm now going to best come out of this pose. So you're going to want to remove the strap off the feet and bend the knees, feet to the mat, and scooting backwards. And then roll them over and coming back out. 
Right, we're going to end now in a Vadabhanasana, Shavasana. So, bolster like this. We have straps and we have blocks if you feel that you want to have them to support your outer thighs. Folding this up for the neck and head. Having this here. So we're going to come and find a Vadabhanasana. Placing the feet on the bolster. And then taking our strap, making a wider loop, knees together, strap over the legs, and the, the width of the loop will be determined when you open your legs. So first of all, scoot your buttocks closer to the bolster and open the legs. Now if there's no support from your straps, come out and tighten up, scoot back in, make sure the strap is right at the root of the thighs as much as possible and then open until you have the right support you feel the strap beautifully holding the outer thighs that indent in the outer hips as well and if you're feeling the need for any more of course there's the blocks so first let's lie down constantly adjusting the sacrum towards the bolster and there's always this option if your legs are really high and you're needing more to just just and hold that little bit with the block. The important thing is to be comfortable because it is our shavasana. So make sure the entire spine is feeding the earth. Really important that we start shavasana at least with the entire spine connecting to the earth, starting to bring that awareness, that spinal intelligence. And then each shoulder rolling back so that as we rest with the spine on the earth, our front body, which we often close in protection, is open. And so it's receiving shavasana, free of fear. And then the arms extending right in the middle of the back of the skulls, feeling that. Both eyelids closing over the eyeballs. Both eyeballs receding towards the back skull as if they had little passages, little tunnels that led each eyeball to each respective side of the back skull. The outer ears, both of them, being drawn inwards, the right outer ear to the right inner ear, the left outer ear to the left inner ear. And soften the right jaw, the left jaw, and the root of the tongue. And rest in here in Shavasana.
limbs now, bending the elbows and lifting the hands and pressing them together in front of the center chest, in front of the heart. Sharing the gift of this practice and extending extra love, extra energy that we have with all sentient beings. May the universe know love. May the universe know peace. And may we help all those that we connect with to feel the same. Om. Peace. Peace. Feeling ready to come out, making sure to roll over. And a feeling of rebirth every time. And here we are. Our practice is complete. Namaste. Be well. See you soon.